So obviously, it's clear that we need to have this conversation again. I have already made a video about this. Please watch that video after you watch this one or even watch it before because technically we could call it a part one and this could be part two. What we're going to do today is we are going to read an article, A Tale of Two TikToks or Lifestyle of the Luxury Black Girl by Faith J. Day, which is available on Zora.medium.com. I will have all links below because of course you know that I believe in citing my sources. We are going to read and respond to this article. And after we read and respond to this article and I share my thoughts, we're also going to head over to Twitter and uh, engage with the more recent discourse on Black girl, Black women in luxury, YouTube, TikTok, and influencer culture because a not a new conversation, but the conversation has been reignited on Twitter and on YouTube in October. I've noticed that the conversation has been gaining traction again. So we're going to first read this article and then we're going to head over to Twitter. Okay. Also, hey, my name is Winter. If you enjoy this video, I do have a podcast. All links are down below. I also have a Patreon. I haven't put anything on my Patreon yet because... I just haven't, but I have a Patreon and I will be bringing you guys exclusive content. Okay. Okay. Let's begin this article. A tale of two TikToks or lifestyle of the luxury black girl. Like most people, I love tracking the TikTok communities that I exist in. And recently I have found myself in what is colloquial referred to as luxury TikTok. As the name would suggest, luxury TikTok includes all of the things that one would associate with luxury. Most of the content includes videos of individuals enjoying their life at five-star restaurants, hotels, and vacations, in addition to frequent yachting and high-fashion shopping trips. Like the 21st century version of Lifestyle of the Rich and Famous, these vlog-like videos offer a peek behind the gates of a community that many people would never have access to, offering an aspirational look into the world of wealth. So I want to stop here already, yes, after paragraph one. Because when we think about the Black women in luxury, Black girl in luxury lifestyle movement, it is aspirational. And I do think that pretty much most of the women who are participating in this movement via social media and turning it into a content creation career, turning themselves now into influencers by sharing their lifestyles, absolutely mean for it to be aspirational. I do understand the critiques that, you know, black capitalism is not going to save us. And of course, I agree there. But I do think sometimes, I don't know if there's such a thing as being too critical, but I do think sometimes we are taking like too critical of an approach to black women um, in luxury and black girls in luxury. I think what's happening is that we are really trying to over politicize a movement that wasn't started to really have a political conversation. And of course, the personal is political. We know that every and anything that Black women do, especially darker skinned Black women, is political. It is the reality of existing in a Black body, especially in America or in the Americas. I 100% understand that. And even with understanding that, I will... I will confidently say the black woman in luxury, black girl in luxury movement is not one that is meant to make any political critiques. I think it is 100% meant to be aspirational. I think it is meant to be a sort of corrective reprogramming movement. And if you aren't familiar with the term corrective reprogramming or corrective programming, basically it just means, you know, providing a counter narrative to that is negative. So the black women, black girl in luxury movement on TikTok, on YouTube, on Instagram, in general, even in film and just general media, because if you pay attention or if you are paying attention, I would argue that in media, in television, we are just starting to just get more examples, more programming of black women who are living lifestyles that we would consider to be that of an excess of wealth and of extreme comfort. And we are not used to seeing those depictions of ourselves on television. 
And these women typically are experiencing this because their employment calls for it. Whether they are a doctor, a lawyer, they are an entrepreneur, whatever it is, it is enforced right it is asserted in the in this media that these women are earning an income where they have the, the disposable income to have that kind of lifestyle and i think that's really interesting because i think if you were to look back 10 20 30 years ago the depictions of black women in the media were not that of a mary jane <laughs> right uh take the character maybe attributes out of it you could feel how you feel about the character of mary jane from being mary jane but just look at her life and look at the lifestyle she was living she came from a family that already was quite wealthy right that put that placed her in a certain position she got herself where she did in her life and she maintained that lifestyle and we're getting more depictions of just that sort of black woman either she already comes from wealth or she does build herself up and acquires wealth, and then she maintains this lifestyle, right? We don't follow it up with, oh, and then she loses everything, or there's some hardship, whatever. No, like, the hardship is life, because life is life. But this woman's wealth, she will maintain, she will have. It, she will not, it won't, it won't slip through out of her hands because of whatever. No, right? We're starting to get these depictions of black women, not only do they deserve wealth, not only can they acquire wealth, but they can also keep, they can maintain right? And they can generate it more. So it becomes generational wealth. So I think that's interesting. Anyway, that was, you know, three minutes after reading paragraph one. Let's continue. (laughs) This content also follows a lot of the conventions of modern day reality television. And as time has gone by, I have also begun to identify multiple genres of content within this general category. Specifically, most of the content that is shown to me can be described as luxury black girl TikTok. Not to be confused with the quite controversial middle-class black girl TikTok. Luxury black girl TikTok exists as a tier above in its representation of black women enjoying a luxurious lifestyle or what Kamorley Simmons might have called a life of fabulosity in her early 2000s. Offering a disparate representation of black womanhood, luxury black girl TikTok includes, but is not limited to, videos featuring the shopping and fashion exploits of hijab-wearing women in Northern Africa, all the way to the latest African-American beauty influencer riding around Beverly Hills. As these videos continued to cross my screen, I also began to notice a trend in the video comments which pointed out the fact that there were actually two distinct lifestyles commonly viewed as the pinnacle of black girl luxury. On one side of the niche, there were black women, usually middle-aged and from the corporate world, who had, ach- who had achieved some form of career success. These women were usually single and childless with their own homes, apartments, and generally seen decorating and getting ready for the day through daily routines and work schedules. In contrast, there were also videos of younger black women who sometimes had a career, but usually spent a lot of time out on dates. For this second group, it wasn't always certain what they did, but they seemed to be interesting and well-dressed enough for people to follow them. Okay, so let's stop here and let's respond. So first of all, what, what even is luxury, right? Luxury, the state of great comfort and extravagant living. And, or luxury can also be defined as an inessential, desirable item which is expensive or difficult to obtain. Luxury luxurious or the nature of a luxury so luxury can either mean a state of great comfort and extravagant living so an excess right opulence luxuriousness sumptuous richness costliness these are all other adjectives right that can be put in place for the word luxury or it can be an inessential desirable item which is expensive or difficult to attain similar to indulgence extravagance self-indulgence treat extra. So first of all, depends on how you're wanting to describe luxury. And today, this article and myself are more so paying attention to the first definition of luxury, which is the state of great comfort or extravagant living. Okay. But keep in mind both of those definitions because they are working in parallel with each other. And also, they just are the definition. So, the thing about black girl 
um, and luxury TikTok and YouTube or black women and luxury TikTok and YouTube is, yes, I would agree that there are pretty much two sides to the niche. Um, two popular sides, I would say. They're not the only two sides. That's not true, but they are the two most popular. You have the middle-aged women who are in the corporate world who have amassed wealth over, you know, a number of years through their jobs. Or you have the other side, which I would argue is the influencer, um, entrepreneurial side, right? So as it said here for the second group, it wasn't always certain what they did, but they seemed to be interesting and well-dressed enough for people to follow them. So that's why I said most of those young women are usually influencers or that they're entrepreneurs or they fall somewhere in that category, right? So of course, of course, of course, of course, of course, I've seen the comments. Yes, we all know that of course, some of these women who are participating in this for the content purposes, are sugar babies. That's fine. Some of these women also just come from wealthy families and they're not disclosing that. That's also fine because it's not your business to know if someone's family is just full of millionaires or billionaires. Oh well, sis has to tell you that. Sis wanted to get on TikTok and show you the new bag she got or sis wanted to, you know, show you her hair. You don't gotta know what her daddy do for work or her mama. That's where that whole parasocial relationship Thing comes into play. I also did a video about that. And that also comes into people just feeling super entitled because of the internet. It's not your business what any person is doing outside of the internet who has chosen to share their lifestyle on the internet. I know people like to believe they have a right, but you don't. You only have a right to know what they've chosen to share. If you go out of your way to seek out more information without their consent, you're being creepy. Okay? Okay. We responded to that. This distinction between the two luxury TikToks was genuinely exposed through video comments who always want to know the same thing. What does she do? While this is a seemingly innocent question, its appearance in the comments speaks to a larger question around the performance of race, gender, and class, as well as societal beliefs about the relationship between the value of work and the proper acquisition of wealth. Therefore, I would be remiss if I didn't walk us through my thoughts on the controlling images and conversations that I have found in my little corner of the clock app. So before we move in to the next part, which are the author's thoughts on the controlling images and conversations that they have found, I want to pause again and respond. So there's been a conversation now because of another TikToker around black women luxury but also how you acquire wealth in basically if that means you deserve the lux the luxuries you're experiencing in life and she goes on to target and i'm go i'm specifically using the language of target yes she goes on to target ari fletcher and jada so i watched the tiktok and I just thought it was interesting because, again, we're getting into these conversations of, of course, respectability politics and who deserves what. Now, Jada, we all, well, maybe we don't all know, but before Jada was Jada Wada and before Jada started Dang Little Baby, Jada was a more Jada. Jada comes from a well-to-do family. So again, right, this is a young black woman who is coming from wealth. Not super, you know, they weren't billionaires, right? I don't know the exact numbers, but Jada was above just being middle class. Her family, you could argue, was upper middle class. You could even say very wealthy. Her family had money. So Jada had a financial support system that allowed her to start a business, right? Without having to jump through some of the hoops and go through some of the hurdles that other black women may experience. Great. Cool. So Jada had already amassed one popularity for herself and a cash flow that positioned her to be wealthy in the way that we were reading it on Instagram. Then enters little baby and now she is in a different arena of her proximity to wealth and luxury. So people always saw Jada as being luxurious because she 
from the day she <laughs> entered right the internet, she was seen as a black woman in the space of luxury because she was already wealthy. She came from a wealthy background. And then she just started to amass more wealth independently, right, without her parents. And then, in, you know, intra relationship, she started to develop it more when she was with baby. Cool. Ari, I don't, from research, so Ari already had a following. It was gaining more of a following. I would say Ari was just kind of always like an influencer, right? She was like teetering that. You could argue if she was very popular or not. Regardless, Ari Fletcher, Ari had a name for herself. Cool, of course. You know, she also begins to date a rapper. Now she is, you know, she has a closer proximity to a whole different kind of wealth and a whole different kind of luxury. Now, the way that Jada and Ari present themselves is an aesthetic. You don't have to present yourself that way. And you could be making the same kind of money that they are. Or you could be in a, as close a proximity to the kind of wealth that they have. Um, and you don't have to present yourself that way. So this TikToker, this woman, you know, went on to say that she aspires, you know, to have certain luxuries in her life, but not to be like a Jada or an Ari, which really the undertone of this is all just the baby mama conversation and just other black women <laughs> feeling like, other black women don't deserve the same things that they do because they aren't respectable in the way that they are. And at the end of the day, the Aries and the Jadas of the world deserve the very same thing that the Michelle Obamas of the world do. Like, you're no better, boo. You're no better. But even in that realm of luxury black women, black women in luxury, rich black girl TikTok, there are people who want to control the narrative and control the images because there is a distinct group of women. And this is large numbers. I'm talking about 10 people. I'm talking about tens of thousands of black women who, right, don't want to include the Ari and the Jadas in the black women in luxury. Although these women are living the definition of luxury at least from what we can tell from social media and what they share with us, right? Because none of us are their bestest friends in the world, so we don't know what the reality of life is, but we know what we see, okay? And so these women, you could even say are like the pinnacle of, right, this luxurious, you know, black wealth movement and the digital social media age. And there are women that don't want them to have anything to do with the movement. They don't subscribe to them. They're like, you know, I'm nothing like a Jada or a Ari. And it's like, girl, cool. But they still get to be a part of the movement. They also are literally living it. So why don't you like them? What, you know, what's the problem for real? We'll get into the problem. Boss ladies and baby girls. The controlling images of luxury black girl TikTok. In the book, Black Feminist Thought, scholar Patricia Hill Collins famously notes that within media, there are many stereotypes or controlling images that are used to depict Black women. And while I will not walk through all of the images here, there will be an article linked down below and a video. Um, you need to, and I'm, I'm serious about this. If you're listening to this video, you really need to read the linked article and watch the linked video that gives a more detailed description of the images. So due to the fact that Colin's book came out many, many, like many years ago, there have been multiple references to the list which have updated these types and included new types which are more relevant to the current time period. So therefore, I'm going to use this section to theorize a bit about the binary between what I view as the image of the boss lady and the baby girl that represent the two sides of luxury black girl TikTok. Working for wealth or the images of the boss lady. In the series, Ayana Fix My Life, writer and spiritualist Ayana Van Zant uses an exercise which offers an excellent unpacking of how we can see these controlling images, or what Carl Jung might call archetypes, operating in our daily lives. 
In the June 2021 episode, Taking Care of Business, Ayanna Van Zandt has the Black women on the series pick an archetype which has both positive and negative or light and shadow aspects. Van Zandt specifically describes the boss lady as a workaholic who gets things done. But on the shadow side, the archetype is controlling, insecure, and intimidating. Therefore, a large part of the archetype of the boss lady is her relationship to work, which brings in her wealth. The content that I come across on the boss lady side of luxury black girl TikTok reflects this focus on work and self-discipline or control. As many other videos outline the daily routines of these women. Therefore, these women do not only perform their wealth through the representation of a luxury lifestyle, but they also want the viewer to know that the wealth being displayed was earned by themselves and for themselves. Even when on vacation, we are reminded that the boss lady is not just going on vacation just because. Her vacation is depicted as a reward for a much needed break from her job. So while many people view these women as role models or that girl, a Marxist analysis of the content could also describe this image through the concept of the bourgeoisie hero. This characterization is depicted as the emblem of the strong, independent Black woman who got it on her own. Similar to the fictional tales of rappers that started from the bottom and made it to the top of their game. This characterization not only exists within the realm of TikTok, but also within Black media in general. Boss ladies are the lawyers, CEOs, and professionals that were able to ascend from poverty or generational wealth into positions of power and influence. In this sense, the depiction is presented as the image to which other young women should aspire. So... Boss lady TikTok or like hashtag girl boss or, you know, CEO black woman, Twitter and YouTube and TikTok, I am quite familiar with. And it's uh, it's interesting because it's like on the one hand, right, black women in luxury, the whole movement, black girls in luxury is really supposed to be well not it's supposed I, I didn't I didn't create it, so I'm not gonna sit here and tell you what it's supposed to be, but I believed that the focus of it was more so about black women sort of divesting from this. We always have to be on go. We always have to be working. We always have to be the strong, independent black woman don't need no man, right? We are supposed to be divesting from that narrative. And this is supposed to be us at rest. This is us at ease. Black women deserve rest. I am resting, right? As it said, even when on vacation, we are reminded that the boss lady is not just going on vacation just because. Her vacation is depicted as a reward or a much needed break from her job. And I really, you know, I, I would really like it to just because she just felt like going to Cancun on a Tuesday. You know, like why? Like that is just as fair of a thing to do as it is, yes, to reward yourself for working very hard for the last, you know, two months without taking a break, no days off, ah, 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 rising grind. I get that. I totally get that. But I feel my independent critique is that the Black Women Luxury Movement, if it is going to be a movement, if we're going to use that language, that it should be about rest. I don't think we should be, even within luxury spaces, be reminding ourselves. Of how hard we work. We know how hard we work. We know how hard we work. We don't have to remind ourselves about it. Even in spaces that we are carving out for ourselves. That are supposed to be about luxury and rest. And what like how the flippity flappity flip jack patty whack. Give it all a bone. <laughs> does like work enter the space of black women in luxury. That just seems so like wild to me it, it just seems so wild to me and then what and then what's even more upsetting too is that a lot of the times right those who exist on the side or let me, let me not say exist those who what those who wish to align themselves with you know the boss lady side of black girl on tiktok wealthy black girl which girl tiktok and youtube you know um 
will feel like the women who probably fit in that baby girl category. So, like, so let's say the Jada and the Aries, right? The influencer type, right? They feel like those women aren't as deserving because they didn't, quote unquote, work for it, right? Because sis didn't get a job working wherever and climb the corporate ladder or because sis didn't come out of, you know, being impoverished and had to struggle, struggle, struggle. And, and, you know, she had to save $10,000 over the course of five years. And then after those five years of struggle, she was able to do it, right? Because she can't identify with that, you know, how can she really step into this space? She's always been in this space. It's not fair, whatever. And it's like, girl, once again, shaming us, like, Black women shaming other black women is not going to help us. It's not going to get us anywhere. It's not going to progress us. But once again, this is why I'm here having this conversation again, because it's much more nuanced than the way that we've been speaking about it. But let's talk about the baby girls, right? What about the baby girls? Because the baby girls, the baby girls, the girlies deserve luxury too. Are you kidding me? Whining for wealth or the image of the baby girl. In stark contrast to the image of the boss lady, the image of the baby girl exudes a much more subtle form of power. As the name suggests, the baby girl is usually younger than the boss lady. She can be an influencer, artist, or creative, but usually her work is ambiguous or potentially scandalous, overlapping with the popular TikTok communities like Sugar Baby TikTok or even Stripper TikTok. Many baby girls are in a relationship with someone or exchange services which provide them the means to live their luxury lifestyle. So again, the girl is dating the rappers, the girl is dating the singers, the girl is dating the designers or the models, right? Like they themselves might not be the talent, so to speak, but their partner is, right? And we want to try to diminish that. Like, sis, just because her boyfriend is whoever, whoever, and he gave her the seed money for a company, doesn't mean sis, like, didn't work for it. First of all, being in a relationship is not easy, so, okay, okay. Usually existing outside of the frame of their videos of content, we see the occasional hand filled with money or expensive shoes crossing a floor as this young woman lives her best life financed through the wealth of her beau. It was also on the side of luxury black girls TikTok that I learned of the popular concept and hashtag hypergamy. You can also pronounce this word hypergamy or hypergamy. I pronounce it hypergamy because that's my business. According to Women's Health Magazine, hypergamy is the centuries-old practice of women seeking arrangements or relationships with a partner that offers them some form of social mobility, whether it be through connections, education, or wealth. From this view, I describe the baby girl with the statement of whining for wealth with the fact that the baby girls can also overlap with the brat community on TikTok, especially for the sugar babies or trust fund kids. These women are viewed or characterized as receiving money because they ask for it instead of always having to work for it. But then again, if you are a sugar baby or a stripper or do any type of adult work like that, you're you're working for your money. Like, sister girl, I don't know what y'all, what's not clicking for y'all, but those girls are working for their money. Trust and believe me. With that being said, this particular image brings up many questions around societal perceptions of work. Despite the realities of professions in domestic labor, child rearing, adult work, escorting, etc., there is still a perception within our community that the only real work is work where you have an employer, an office, or an LLC, which is like, ugh, release us from the shackles of that. Therefore, I would also describe the baby girl as an infantilized view of black womanhood. Unlike the boss lady who was viewed as older or more mature, the baby girl is a throwback to the images of the 1950s housewife, screen vixen, or the popular bimbo trope. Oh, I made a really good video about the Claremont twins and why bimbofication wins. You guys should really watch that. All of these images portray young women as less intelligent and incapable of working out in the world, but very capable of managing a household and or creating and catering to the wants and needs of a man. Thinking about the term baby girl as a term of endearment for a young person or girl, we can also see how this particular image can be infantilizing in this presumed dependency on the wealth and goodwill of others. 
the false binary of boss ladies and baby girls. And examining the commentary on both of these types of content, comments on both sides of luxury black girl TikTok are split based on competing perceptions of race, gender, class, and sexuality. Especially when studying black women, there are so many intersections to consider which include their own specific societal beliefs that sometimes work well together and other times diverge sharply. Nowhere is this more true than in the analyzing the performance and perception of black women who display forms of wealth. Within America in particular, there is an understanding of class and money, which is rooted in a Protestant work ethic that presumes that if you have the money, either you or your family worked very hard for it. You work very hard for it, okay? Or you should have worked very hard for it. Additionally, there is a general belief that if you are black, you have no money at all. And if you do, then your acquisition of it is less likely to be based on hard work, merit, or familial, familial inheritance. But more so based on some type of entertaining talent or skill or something untaught. You know, I wrote down in my notes... That we don't need to question black women about their wealth. Why do we immediately question where the wealth came from when it's experienced by black people, by black bodies? And like, think about it. Like, think about yourself. Don't think about society. Don't think about media. Think about yourself. Like, when you see a group of young black women, young black boys, young black people, you know, dress down. And I'm not even talking about they're wearing a bunch of symbols of wealth. So they're not wearing symbols of wealth. So they're not wearing name brands. Or maybe they are, but the, the brand, right, logo, the symbol of wealth is not visible on the clothing. But they're dressed down. You know that they are, the clothing they got on is expensive. Or at least it looks expensive, right? Or you see them roll up out of a car, whatever. Like, you... Make assumptions. You start to think that you probably know where they're coming from or what they did to be able to afford that, right? And it's so weird because it's like, when we see that with white people or literally any other group, we don't start to really like question where that wealth came from, you know? We just kind of accept it. Oh, there's a group of white girls, you know, getting out of a freaking Mercedes. Cool. Regular degular. Look at her. 100% customized Hummer. I'm not going to question it at all. But you see a black guy, right? Come out of the same bust down Hummer, special rims, red detailing. Okay, the car got red bottoms, poo. And you probably think he's a drug dealer. And it's like, okay, he might be, but also he might not be. And why is that immediately where our minds go to? That's programming, y'all. Like, yes, you could sit here in my comments and be like, because a lot of the times they might be a drug dealer because da, 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 they like that flashy stuff. Okay, that's that's fine and dandy. That holds true for some, but it's also programming. Like, if every time you turn on a television, if every time you watch the news, if every time you watch a movie or whatever, get a book, like, and the black person who has a lot of wealth has done it illegally then that means in real life, whenever you see a black person who is displaying a lot of wealth, maybe to the point where it's ostentatious, your mind is going to assume they probably did something illegal when they could be a whole lawyer. Like, they could be a whole, they could be a dentist. Like, that, they could just be, they could just be wealthy. Their family could just be wealthy. But your mind usually goes something untoward because that is a programming. That's why I was speaking about earlier the black women luxury movement is really corrective reprogramming because it just needs to be accepted that sometimes people just have the money or yes, they've just worked very hard and they've done their savings. They've done their prioritizing of their money and they have a mass of wealth. And so now they have the funds where they can get up and do what they feel like with their money. And what are you going to say about it? Nothing. You're going to mind your business. But I do think it is a necessary movement to be happening because it's, uh, I think it is helping people just kind of get used to just seeing, just seeing it. So when you walk outside, hopefully your response now is like, yes, sis, or you better go ahead, bro. Instead of like, oh, I bet, I bet her boyfriend a scammer. I did it. And if he is, and if he is, 
sis still got the bag. Like, okay, okay, like, okay. In this sense, when we see black women performing wealth online, many people respond in line with these critiques. Therefore, the common question of what does she do is laden with identity-based assumptions and value judgment before anyone answers. But once someone does, we really get to see where people stand on the issue. While some people critique baby girls because they don't do traditional work, even using the example of the boss lady to shame them, Others view the boss lady's work ethic and sometimes her usually older age as unattractive to men or unbecoming of woman. This is real. like, y'all, the ageism is real. Hence, the juxtaposition between the boss lady and the baby girl also brings up centuries long conversations around the performance of black women's gender and sexuality. While the boss lady is stereotyped as masculine in her willingness to make her own money through her strength. Determination and the discipline of daily routines and constant work, the baby girl is held up with many online communities as an incredibly feminine in her willingness to allow her partner to provide for her in lieu of engaging in the workforce. Yet, especially in our modern world, there is much more to masculinity and femininity than our relationship to work. And there are many feminist scholars who would argue for the value of domestic labor when describing the duties of a wife, mother, girlfriends, etc. But interestingly enough, the images of these two TikToks can each be described using Jung's feminine archetypes. So there is very much a false binary created when viewing one image as more feminine than the other. Therefore, it is also important to note that we cannot map on antiquated antiquated and biased understandings of gender roles in order to describe femininity and masculinity or these two ways of acquiring or accessing wealth because the masculine accessing of wealth and the feminine accessing of wealth people believe are two different things when really they are the same working harmoniously final thoughts and feelings Returning to the necessary distinction between luxury black girl TikTok and middle class black girl TikTok, I would like to also mention the lack of class consciousness that comes with our understanding of luxury. In many ways, luxury and living a lifestyle of luxury acts as a signifier but not an indicator of wealth, especially when thinking about the performance of identity online. It's easy for social media influencers and users to craft believable images of their lives through very, through very carefully con. Oh my gosh, this sentence! Especially when thinking about the performance of Danny online, it is easy for social media influencers and users to craft a believable image of their lives through very careful content creation and curation. So even though we are being sold these luxury lifestyles through this content, it is also important to remember that the critical analysis and representation is just as relevant in content, which is presenting itself as reality. Therefore, even as we enjoy the fascinating lives of luxury black girls, we must always unpack the implicit and explicit meanings that are included in each piece of content especially unpacking what this video content means at the moment in time in for this particular community. So, you know, it's an interesting one. Um, I love that she like ends it on that kind of a note because yes, the class analysis is lacking. And also when things are being produced, matters. The way this content is being produced matters. The way this content is being consumed matters. The timing, everything matters. Everything matters. Even if the content creator themselves is um, consciously unaware of it, it matters, right? It It's all sending a certain kind of message, but I'm not here to shame other black women. I'm also not here to say that I think that the movement needs to be, you know, stuffed down, nothing like that. Like, no, I think black women deserve some escapism. But I also think that understanding that the representations of that escapism is someone's realism because that is someone's life. Like, it's okay. Um, And I don't think that we have to go under the video of women who are doing a haul or, you know, 
showing their two homes or taking a vacation in Italy. I don't think we need to be in their comments talking about this is, you know, so ostentatious or black capitalism is not going to say, but sweetie, sister, sis, hey, 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 sister, hey, 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 listen, she's just doing an unboxing video. You don't need to comment how your Marxist theory, hey, hey, this is not the place for that. Okay. Time and place, sweets. Time and place. Um, I'm not done and this video is already super long, so we are not going to get into Twitter in today's video, but the next video, Squeedy, because I have seen some tweets in the next video, we'll be getting into Twitter and we will discuss the conversations <laughs> that have been happening recently because boy, are they interesting as ever. We're going to talk about those, but I really appreciate you guys for being here today. Thank you for listening. And the next video will be out super soon.